What's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Third and Longhorn. We have a very special edition today with the college football playoff semifinal coming up. And I will turn it over to my fellow guest host. We got a full crew today. Yeah, let's get after it, man. You know I'm ready to debate. Been looking for you for a while, Oak. So let's, get it, baby. let's, let's figure this thing out. Let's get it. Right? <laughs> Fozzie Whitaker here joining again. Grateful for the opportunity. Looking forward to some debating as well. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Derek Johnson, a.k.a. DJ. I uh, can't wait to break down this film, man. I love that Jay Hill said he introduced himself. You know what I mean? He's going to wait so fast. Like, 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 I don't know if he's in between you know Gary <laughs> Johnson <laughs> and Alex Oakley. I don't know if he's in between these yeah. two. All right, I'm Rod Davis, man, playing the 40 Acres back in the day. I feel like the old head of the group. I am the old head you of the group. You are. That's a that's, <laughs> damn shame. Uh, yeah, but happy to be here, man. Excited about this week. Yep, and uh, this is Alex Okafor, you know. Jay came with the energy. I was just going to say, I missed y'all boys. But <laughs> it's getting a little competitive right off the rip. Let's get it. <laughs> right. Let's get it. No, Michigan's in, so he's all excited. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> never going to lay that down. Never, <laughs> never. All right, guys. Well, let's start off on first down. So for first down, how does Texas need to play to beat Washington on offense? What do they need to do? What are the keys? For me, when I first break down the tape, you look at what Texas does well. They are extremely balanced. They can run it. They can throw it. They put you in hard, difficult positions. And then Steve Sarkeesian, we talked about how good he is as a play caller. Dude's going to put them in the best position. You give them a month to prepare for any defense, let alone a week. Mm -hmm. Give them additional weeks. This guy's going to dial up the right things. Where Washington struggles is in open space, and they do not tackle well. A lot of missed tackles. They fly around the ball. They're moving a lot, but they're not bringing any particular guy down with that first contact. Mm. And that's where Texas, I feel like, has the upper hand on the offensive side of the ball. Go let, you know, Jaden Blue. Go let Xavier Worthy. Go let Adonai Mitchell all play in space. Put those guys in space. See what they can do. Force them to gang tackle your top talent guys. And obviously, that's going to be chunk plays that you're having. And then, oh, by the way, still got to watch out for Jatavian Sanders. Oh, by the way, still got to watch out for Jay Witt, who forces two missed tackles every time he touched the rock. And I think that's how you put this Washington defense in a hard spot where they typically struggled over the course of the season in Pac-12 play. Yeah, I love that. I think to add to that, one thing I've seen out of UW this year, I got an opportunity to watch him a couple of times. The first game against Oregon. Um, when I watched him against Arizona State and when I watched him against Oregon State, the three things that I've seen that were consistent is those offenses stayed on the field. Long, sustained drives. It was crazy, too, to watch the Oregon one because Washington was like, boom, 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 touchdown, and then here goes Oregon on an 11-play drive, mm -hmm. right? And I don't know if y'all watched that game or not, but it was some questionable uh, – Coaching decisions. red zone decisions oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That, that ultimately, you know, Oregon lost that first one. Mm -hmm. But I was like, man, I, I don't feel like they just lost that game. And so when I think of Texas, I'm like, hey, I like us already better in the red zone on defense, on third down on defense and against the run on defense. Let's let that defense stay fresh. Mm -hmm. What happens if we sustain these drives? What happens if we let a, a, a very a timing offense not have the opportunity to just stay in rhythm? Mm -hmm. What does that look like? You know what I mean? So I think that it could be an opportunity where Texas is – our offense is just on the field, controlling the flow of the football game. And I think ultimately that is spread over into everything else. And, uh, you know, that's when you start seeing guys trying to force things. Mm -hmm. And that's when you start seeing balls get tipped, assignments getting blown, yeah. and then those explosive plays that Fozzie was talking about, next thing you know, they just happening. Well, and I think we talked about that a little bit when we were referring back to the Big 12 championship about how – Sark kind of took his foot off the gas a little bit in the third quarter. And, and instead of just keeping the track meet going, mm -hmm. winning 70 to 50 or whatever it was going to be, he kind of had a long sustained drive. I remember it was five and a half minutes to start that, that first possession of the second half. Yeah. And a lot of that was CJ and a lot of that were, were some of these guys. And I think there's something to that. And I, and I, I agree with what you're saying is keeping that offense off the field, sustaining these drives. And, it, and I think it's a little bit out Outside of Sark's DNA, he likes the quick, big hitters. But I think in a game like this, getting into a track meet, that's probably exactly what Washington wants. What are y'all's thoughts on that? Yeah, no, I'm with you. I just kind of wanted to go back to Fozzie's point about giving Sark a month to prepare. Like, 
we've seen Sark's play designs and you give this guy a month, I just envision him being in like That's a true. basement as a mad scientist <laughs> just, just, just drawing shit up, man. So I, I think that's what I'm most excited about offensively and, and just see the creative play designs that he's going to come up with. If Sark is in his bag, guys, you know he's throwing the football. Yeah. Mm. That's just his DNA, right? He wants to open up drives with the passing game, wants to open up games with the passing game. And the truth is, if you look at the weakest uh, down defense for Washington, is actually their pass defense on first down. Mm-hmm. They give up a lot of yards. They give up a lot of big plays. Passing wise on first time, I think they're constructed and built to defend the run. They're actually a decent rush defense. They're around 40th in rush defense. So they depend on teams going first down runs and then getting them behind the chains. And they're a really good third down defense. That's where they got most of their interceptions. They got 16 on the year, but once those come on third down, that's when Braylon Trice who's one of the best pass rushers in the country, that's when he can pin his ears back. I think if Texas wants to keep Washington off balance, I think they throw on early downs. Now, I'm not talking about throwing, taking shots deep. That'll put you behind the chain. I'm talking about the extension of the run game, essentially short, high percentage passes to your guys. As Fuzzy mentioned, get them the ball in in space, Mm. right? With room to run. JT Sanders, they got no answer for that matchup advantage. There's definitely not enough DBs there for Jabbar uh, Jabbar Muhammad, who's their uh, best corner corner. Like He'll match up against either Xavier Worthy or A.D. Mitchell, but whoever the other guys matched up against with yep. A.D. Mitchell or Xavier Worthy, they will have a matchup advantage. I think Texas throws to open up the run. They did in the Bama game. I think that's kind of in Sark's tendency. And if he's in his bag, mm-hmm. he's throwing the football. To that point, though, I mean, I think that, that that's like a hand-in-glove kind of fit. Like, we want to throw early. Exactly. We want <laughs> to throw to open the run. Yeah, and he's going to do that. that's susceptible yeah. to yeah. it. Yeah. And then you saying with exactly what I'm thinking, like we're not talking about the shots. Mm-hmm. We're talking about just, you know, the, the misdirection throws, mm-hmm. and th- having guys run sideline to sideline. And then all of a sudden it's really a, a cross the field screen to the tight end. <laughs> yeah, like, the you, yeah, yeah, it's the frustration completions. Yeah. <laughs> and then you, you do that and you mix in that run well enough. All of a sudden it's like first mm-hmm. down and it's first down and it's first. It's like, man, they really on a nine play drive right now. Mm-hmm. It's a nine play four minute. 27 second 74 yard drive right now now we, we looking at first and first and goal from the six yep. and all of, like those kind of drives avoid third down, down all together if you can yeah, oh yeah. absolutely yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no seriously yeah, if it was well, that easy yeah I was gonna say. <laughs> that's, what, that's what they shine is on third down they actually make a lot of plays on third down you yeah. avoid it all together I'm with you yeah, 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 yeah. Just, yeah. just to comment um, probably more on the defense side of all hearing these offensive guys talk about trying to get the ball in space mm-hmm. uh, for the Texas players for well, the Texas defense, we need to not we need to we need to be in their face. We need to not give them as much room. We had a month to prepare, so we know they're really good. Mm-hmm. Washington's really good at passing the ball. I mean, most of their passes, Penix passes, are I mean outside the hashes. I mean, and honestly, mm-hmm. uh, um, um, it's hard, actually I think it's a harder throw outside. I mean, easier <laughs> throws are right there in front yeah. of you, mm-hmm. right there with the digs and stuff right there. But his balls are outside. I mean, mm-hmm. he gets it high and, and only where his guy can catch the ball. So we have some problems there that we have to defend. But we got to we, we can't we know what they do well. We can't stay back and say, hey, you know, we're scared. No, we got to get up. We, we know the game plan. Uh, we're going to I wouldn't say we're going to blitz him, but we need to disguise some things just so Penix can get because I mean he's got a clock in his head like this yeah, quarterback yeah. is really good but he's got yeah. a clock in his head and it, you know he's been hurt before he's been injured so I've seen him move around in the pocket and I mean nobody's around him and at you know one two three seconds and he starts he yeah. starts mm-hmm. moving around and running mm-hmm. out and he doesn't <laughs> run down the field but he's running out of the pocket and if man if I defensive uh, rushes I mean from from the linebackers to the defensive line if they can just corral him just keep him in the pocket and mm-hmm. and and play good because there's gonna be a lot of fifty fifty balls that we're gonna have to defend and and, and we can't and, you know we can't you can't say oh we're gonna just double them every time you can't do that that's just not uh, no, not realistic you're gonna have to there. put your big boy <laughs> yeah you're gonna have to you can't do that. Play, put your big boy pants on yeah. and, and contest some balls and uh, um and we gotta start early though if we can start early I'm just telling you that's gonna give our young DBs that's gonna give everybody. Confidence, everybody. I'm talking about fans, everybody. Yeah. Confidence that we can start fast. And and I think we will. I think but we will. Two things on that though. Like, I don't know if it's just me, you know, drinking the Kool-Aid or what, <laughs> but like I'm not terrified. 
Uh, food. Uh, food. Uh, <laughs> no, well, let me be uh, clear. Food. Penix is a monster with that ball in the air. <laughs> dog. I've seen consistently this year what it looks like when he gets tapped on that shoulder. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When people start saying, hey, I'm actually playing football today and I'm here. Mm-hmm. Hey, Penix, it ain't as clean as you like it to be. Mm-hmm. Arizona State, go watch that game, man. Yeah, I watched that. They lined it down and brought pressure for four quarters. Mm-hmm. And that was the worst I've seen Pennix look all year. Go back and look at the Pac-12 championship. Bo Nick started as slow as they could start. Washington got up big early. Mm-hmm. Go back and look what happened when they start actually Same coming back. Mm-hmm. They start sending them after him. They start making them a little bit uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. He don't want to move. I'm not saying he a statue. I'm saying he don't want to, he does not want to move. So yeah. even though Pennix is the guy and you know, you know. Finalists with the Heisman and everything. His number one receiver is a doozy. You talk about no the number, just number that one target. Nasty. And before anything nice. happens, Respect. I'm just yeah. telling you, know where he is when he comes to screens <laughs> and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Just wherever one is. I mean, he's got number one in his jersey for nice. a reason. Oh, you and then after him, it'll mm-hmm. be Polk. It'll be number two. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's just, they just line it up that way. But I'm telling you, number one, I mean, he's really good too. I ain't gonna lie. He's really, really good. <laughs> but if we can, uh, um, be aware and conscious of where number one is at all times. Just, just because he's that. That's his starter. That's his fire starter. That's his spark. Yeah, when you get him going, all right, now it's open up. They can go to number eleven, go to two. Now he can just mm-hmm. open it up. Now to, you get, you know, you got problems with the run game or whatnot. But a good thing about our defense, we're really good on third down. So yep. if we can, if we can get him in third and, I mean, seven, eight, you know. Not 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 third and short, but third and long. Mm-hmm. Man, we can we can get after this quarterback and 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 really we, we got a really good third down defense. 100%. So here's here's my thing. Talking about bringing pressure, we got to hit Penix. I understand that. Do we do that with four or do we bring pressure? I, I feel like we can't bring pressure, at least not that much pressure this game. Just because with two outside receivers mm-hmm. that they have, yeah. they got two number ones on the edges. Mm-hmm. True. DJ true. talking about he's making NFL type throws outside the hashes. With our secondary, we've had injuries, always not being on the same page. I don't know if this is the team to kind of constantly bring pressure and dial up pressure. I think we have to get it done with So it's it's twofold from my perspective. We look at it. We talked about Steve Sarkeesian having a month to prepare. Mm -hmm. Well, what does Pete Kwiatkowski do? He got a month to prepare. What did he defend while he was at Washington? Mm -hmm. The air raid offense. Mm -hmm. So with him having that type of background, he should know how to stop the air raid mm-hmm. offense or at least have plans in place, contingency plans, in order to prevent them from staying on schedule. The other aspect of it is injuries, right? You mm-hmm. talked about how this backfield, the defensive backfield has been decimated. Mm-hmm. Well, you got a month. Uh, we we, we get healthy. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. there are some exits that happen. To be honest, they weren't necessarily making contributions to the team as of now. So that's mm-hmm. not really been an effect as far as people opting out or transferring away from the game. So the guys that were injured, banged up, didn't have full health playing through. Ryan Watts is going to be huge mm, in this game. Absolutely, he's going to be. Yeah. Got to be able to come he's back be and, him and showcase, showcase what they can do. On the flip side, with that, with the D.C. P.K. being able to have that time frame, you got to mix it up. With a veteran-style quarterback, the way that Michael Penix done played six years of football mm-hmm. in, in college, right, he got mm-hmm. Whole bunch of knowledge. He knows what it takes to be successful. Obviously, Heisman runner up knows how to be successful. You got to mix it up. You can't just go out there and run cover two. You can't just show I'm running saw dog with Mm -hmm. Sam and Will off the edge and show it like that. Mm -hmm. No, you got to disguise things. Mm -hmm. You got to make sure you give in some of those zone pressures. Right. Don't just line up and, and blitz and then run man over the top. No, let's let's do some zone cover stuff. So I think that's where PK got to get in his bag. If we're talking about coordinators and play callers having to do what they need to do to be successful, got to get in his bag and showcase why he was brought to Texas and what made him so successful as a D.C. whenever he was at Washington. Game plan is going to be real key in in this Mm -hmm. game. When you got a month to prepare, it's like coaches. I mean, sometimes that could be bad. Sometimes it could be good. right? (laughs) But you got a month to prepare. It's like, all right, this is what we did all year. Okay, let, let's change some things up. And, and, and as players and hopefully um, guys change up a little, you know, there's plenty of things that come to my head when it comes to, hey, usually when I'm watching film and I'm about to blitz, you'll see me close to the line. Hey, this time I'm not going to be so close to the line just so it doesn't give off certain mm-hmm. things. Just mm-hmm. just little keys that they're going to see all year. Hey, guys, they're 80 percent in this. They're 70 yep. percent in mm-hmm. this. Now it's time to change up that um Give that ch- change up. Well, well, I like. Oh, go ahead. No, I'm just go saying ahead. to win a big game, to add to the point, you got to break tendency. So you're right. Both these teams will break tendency at the right time. Yep. Romo yep. Dunze is a dog. <laughs> Dan Jeremiah says he might be the first wide receiver drafted overall. Last time Texas saw a receiver of that ilk was probably LSU. 
Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, that's probably the last time you saw a receiving core this damn good, mm -hmm. other than the one you see at practice. Uh, he catches over 70% of his contested targets, which literally means 50 50 balls become 70 30 Ooh, balls, literally, mm -hmm. with this dude. Leaves college football in contested catches uh, with 17 overall. Uh, he's the real deal. Texas will have to, you know, designate a different bracket coverage or role coverage to him. Uh, but Fuzzy's right, and so is Derek Johnson. You got. You got, at one point, you just going to have to roll the dice. It's kind of a casino thing and roll the dice and pick your poison. You can't take away everything yeah. all at one time. Mm -hmm. right. Last year, they took away the deep ball. They only completed one deep ball last season. First mm -hmm. play of the game. It was a flea flick. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's, That's right. the only deep ball they completed over 20 yards last year. They threw a 10 wow. of them, only completed one. But you took away the deep stuff, but that came at the expense of giving up rushing yards. Because mm -hmm. you played with a lot of light boxes last season. So you gave up over 150 something rushing yards. You gave up over five and a half yards per rush. And you gave up over 55% conversion rate on money downs. This year, you're a top five rushing defense or a top five money down defense. You can use the same game plan you did last year. Actually. I agree. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, I was and, just, and just with the money downs, say, yeah. and with the money downs, you should be better. And you should be better on rush defense. Yeah. Like the boxes. one thing nobody mentioning is is how you know that running game has built you dub out. Mm -hmm. I've seen it multiple times. It's, that that it's running game running has game bailed too, yeah. them out when they can't figure it mm -hmm. out. When they can't, they they turn around and hand it off. Mm -hmm. and, and Buddy been nice. What's yeah, his name? Dylan, Dylan Johnson. 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 He gets outside. Yeah, too. He not. Yeah. He don't. He don't. He don't get the credit he deserves. I think he put up about eleven hundred this year. Yeah. Yeah. He, yeah. He, he does his thing. Guess what? That ain't happening today. No, nope. yeah. that's not available. It can't happen. No, it's not that yeah. it can't happen. It's actually not available. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think it's not happening? Yeah. Do you think well, Washington you, will? Try to run it. Absolutely. They have, they have I mean, choice. obviously, obviously for balance. Yeah, but they have if you show up, he's had a lot of success. If you show up and you mm -hmm. roll a running back out on the field, you got to try him. But mm -hmm. the yeah. thing is, that's not available. So I would love to see this prolific offense when they don't have that help. See, when that's gone. And, I, and they, that's, that's, that's the tricky part, though. Think about it. When Texas has made a team one dimensional that's when actually we've seen Texas so, struggle. Wait, when, wait, wait, stopping wait, when teams no, 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 become pass first. That, yeah. There's, There's an added you know. part to that, though. We've struggled when the quarterback can move around in their one dimensional. He can move. Around. He can move. Pen are Penix are was you, a track saying, star coming out of high school. Penix can't Penix move. Can move. Oh, 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 I am not afraid. Oh, oh, I am not afraid. Man, somebody move the pocket. I want to hear what he's going to say right here. He doesn't want to, but he can move the I'm not saying his legs don't work. I'm saying they don't work as good as ours. What do we His legs work. He's an able bodied human. He's a better runner than. He is not running. He's not. I would love, or a, him, I would him, love him, for him. a Sugar Bowl mm -hmm. that causes for Michael Penix to have to scramble around and make plays. I would love that. He does that all the time. What I, am I talking yeah. about? No, I, I would, <laughs> he does. Michael Penix is on. Oh, oh my God! Go back and I'm watch. I'm not saying he's a he scrambler, could, he but he could run way more throws. than he does. No, no, no. Yeah, he, yeah, he, he, he escapes the pocket to make you know, throws. Yeah. I'm not saying while there's nobody in his face and there's no pressure. You know how many times Texas sacked him last year? Zero. Absolutely. You know how many times they hit him last year? Zero. Do you think you know we, do you knocked think him down we, do you last think, year? Zero. Do you think wow. we're that they same? They didn't touch him. So by the way, the offensive line is the best pass-rocking offensive line in the country. Thank you, Vazzy. They won a Joe Moore Award. They've only allowed by the offensive lineman five sacks. The right who won the best interior lineman in the, in the I country? I agree. I agree with this. Who, 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 who has the number one my, my rated and number two rated no, defensive tackle in the country? That, yeah. But I think, you're, I think you're underselling his ability as a quarterback to avoid sacks with sack avoidance That's what I'm and the offensive about. line's ability yeah. to pass protect. And I'm saying, Just I'm, and this is what I'm saying, we chin checking that. We gonna see. <laughs> we, we, we are going to see because y'all have no, not faced no. I've, I've they haven't watched faced enough. You do, I've watched like enough. You, mm -hmm. I watched enough I Texas agree. to know. Yeah. Hey man, we got to hold up on the back end. Yep. I watched enough U Dub to know y'all ain't seen no D line like this. They have. And I've also watched enough U Dub to know. Hey, Penix don't like to be touched. Yep. So guess what? We gonna touch them, and you got to see this D line. So we, something got to give. So yeah. Something got to give. Something got to well, give. Well, guys, we already moved to, we already flipped it to, I, I do actually appreciate how, like, and it, it kind of reflects how the Texas fans feel. We spent about a second on the on what the offense needs to do. And we moved instantly to what the defense needs to do. And then I like to that offense was cool, but, but, but I think we we have a good mix of people who have played these positions, and so I want to hear how Texas needs to how like how we need to play it on defense for you. So from the from the defensive lines perspective, what are the keys for you for this game? And we kind of covered it a little bit. We got to hit Penix. We have to. And I, I said it previously on this podcast. 
there's something within Penix that you can't measure. Like there's something in here that makes him different. And if we allow him to tap into that, it's going to be a long day for us. So D line, we have to take the responsibility. We got to lay hands on them. We got to continue to put them on the ground. It's going to be a tough matchup. I think you're sleeping a little bit on Washington's O line. And I think you're sleeping a little bit on his ability to maneuver through the pocket, but I'm confident within this D line. I'm with you. I'm confident within this D line. They just got a tall (laughs) task and they got to handle business. Last but not least, we can't forget who we are identity-wise defensive line, mm. meaning the run game has got to be eliminated. Like you said, it has to be unavailable. If they can get the run game going, we're in a world of trouble. So we got to continue to take that away, and that's got to be our strength. And what do you, how do you feel about I – mean, you know, I've heard a lot of people – everyone focuses on Murphy and Sweat, of course, like mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. But I think such a key to the game is going to be how the ends play, how Sorrell, mm-hmm. how yeah. Burke, how Absolutely. these guys yeah. – like what do the ends need to do to try to control mm-hmm. this? They got to step up. Like you got to create a high rush lane so that he can't spin out. He can't escape mm-hmm. outside. Like we've got to get – we've got to dial up a little more pressure from the edge. We know what we're going to get inside. We know we're going to get hands in his face. But can we get that pressure from the outside consistently – I'm excited to watch it. I think we got the bodies. I love what we got in Burke. I love what we got in Sorrell. Love what we got in these young bucks. We just got to put it all together and have the best game of our lives, defensive and wise. I agree. That's the crazy part. Yeah. I don't agree. I agree with everything you said except for that last sentence. We ain't got to have the best game of our lives. DN wise? DN wise. We do not have to Maybe have Maybe not best. of our lives, but we got to have a top three game I, of this I, season. I'm saying like they need to come up and play their game. I don't need to I think to they got to play a little bit higher than their game. You you believe in that offensive line from UW? I get it. You know, they got a first round tackle. What are you talking I'm, about? I'm, I'm, not saying, I'm, not, I'm not saying. I'm saying like I've, what I've seen this year multiple times is that offensive line be stalemated. I've seen it multiple times. Now, they they pulled those games out. Salute to UW. Them boys can play some ball. But I've seen that multiple times. What I have not seen one time this year is a running back line up and run that ball on us. Mm-hmm. I've mm-hmm. seen one quarterback get off on us on the ground. That's old boy at uh, Dylan Gabriel. Yep. Mm-hmm. All right, I think he was the most rushing yards we gave up. It, 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 it was the yeah. most it rushing was. yards. It was his career. <laughs> okay. It was a career. So, was a career. So yeah. My, my yeah. point is, Unless Penix gonna give me that, mm-hmm. I'm really not too concerned about people, anybody in a purple jersey running the football. That's fair. I'm, I'm not mm-hmm. concerned about that. I don't mm-hmm. believe. I do not believe that's available. I, and I'm just saying it can't be because yeah. if, yeah. if we get leaky, like if there's leaky rush yards on the field, it completely fits, flips this game. That's true. And that's what I'm trying to avoid. That's true. Yeah. Well, and then let, so let's let's take it from let's move to the linebackers yeah, yeah. from from DJ's perspective. Like, how who needs to play well? How does that need to look for Texas to be successful? Yeah, it all starts with Jalen Port, a guy in the middle, a guy that's just running everything. The quarterback of the defense, especially with his counterpart with the uh, young guy Anthony Hill. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, he's he's playing a run and he's rushing the pass. He did, he's wearing a lot of different hats. Mm-hmm. Um, but when it comes to Jalen and those guys in the middle. Uh, and y'all just talked about it. We have to stop the run. It can't be available. But there, there's we. You have to go into this game thinking, hey, they're not going to do just regular runs, right? It, it, knowing that we can really stop runs, you got to do trap plays. You got to do certain mm-hmm. other plays. So you, your, your, your sense of awareness has to be up. You just mm-hmm. can't go out there and say, all right, you know, they're going to do a zone. We're really going to stop them. It's like, no, nah, it's going to be, hey, crack toss here, misdirection here, yeah. boom, boom. Yeah. And you got to yeah. bunch of other stuff just to get it going. Mm-hmm. And, and, and I don't think it's going to work. Just like you said, I don't think it's going to work. But they're, they're going to get that. They're not going to give them vanilla runs because it's just not going to work because we can set the edge and we can we can um, build walls in the middle of the defense. So, uh, And, and for the, um, for the uh, inside backers in the middle, they're not going to get much when it comes to the passing game. Maybe the RPO here and there with the slants and stuff, but – Man, a bunch of these balls are outside, um, outside the, mm-hmm. out, outside the uh, the hashes. At the end of the day, so stopping the run, making sure they're communicating on everything, making sure when Penix is running around because he can run. Yeah, he, he can run again. I know but, his legs work, but, but, but <laughs> I, I, never, I never said that the young oh, man. No, 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 I never said your legs don't work. Oh, to, to, to Jay Hill's point, he, if he, when he does escape, he ain't he ain't going. He ain't he trying ain't, to run down. He ain't going down. down. He's not a scrambler. He ain't going down. He escapes the throw. Yes, he escapes the throw. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair, yeah. Fair. So stay back in coverage because he's definitely Number trying one. to get, he will get, get it there. Yeah, Man, that, that, that's scramble drill. Get it there. How do you? Drill. How do you look? I think a lot of us remember one of the, one of the biggest moments of the year was how they used Anthony Hill against Alabama. Right, mm-hmm. he did a lot to help control Jalen Milrow and really mess things up. Do you foresee something like that this yeah, game? Absolutely, and 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 it'll work better just because you know Penny can run, but he's not. 
He's not. He's, he's not that guy. <laughs> he's not Melrose. Yeah, though. he's not Melrose yeah, at all. No, like, no, he, he's, he's not, not Dylan Gabriel. <laughs> yeah. No. He's True. Not. I don't know True. if Dylan Gabriel was Dylan Gabriel. No, Dylan Gabriel. <laughs> 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 he, 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 he turned into somebody else. Dylan Gabriel got some, got some, he got some wheels, man. man. He I showed me something crazy. crazy. Yeah, that, that, was, yeah. that was that was his career high. Yeah, 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 that was career high. Anthony yeah. yeah. Hill will be a key, uh, mm-hmm. uh, key guy when it comes to bringing bringing Penix down. Yeah, All four of right. his five sacks have come in those big games: Alabama, Oklahoma, big time title game. Yeah. All right. game, guy. So let's yeah. move it to the part of the defense that I think everyone's been talking about. Oh, so let's move oh, yeah. it to oh, the I got you. Yeah. work on, cut man. out, baby. Yeah. Yeah. How do you probably <laughs> stop Adunze? How do you stop oh, Polk? How do you stop McMillan? Oh, I mean, they got McMillan, what, Bernard, too. Yeah. Yeah. Like, they got, yeah. like, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, no, no. It's going to What do you do? Are we going to need D line? We need to help with the side of the line, man. We need a lot of pressure. I'll say this about the DBs to start. Uh, I think Fozzie hit the nail on the head. You got to show him a different look. The one interception he threw last season, go back and watch that rep. The D line, they're all in like kind of a ghost from them moving around mm-hmm. in that amoeba mm-hmm. front. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. He has no idea what's happening and he just kind of throws it because he trusts his system. Keep in mind, Thank one you. thing that does worry me, this guy's been in this system a long time, right? We're talking about three, four years in this system. You know, Dylan Gabriel's in his system, what, five, mm-hmm. four or five years, right? He was comfortable in that system. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Donovan Smith from uh, U of H was comfortable in his system because mm-hmm. that was the air raid. He'd been running a long time. Uh, Will Howard, comfortable in his system. The quarterbacks that have been really comfortable in their system, when they've had to go past first against Texas, they've been really good. And they've been able to make some plays. I do think you guys are right. Texas will stop the run. And then mm-hmm. in any team that's been able to that that kid from Texas Tech, man, that dude should put that on his resume. Right. He got ninety five <laughs> yards. <laughs> and, and to this day, I say cut the tape on. When did no, he I know. get those yards? Man, those fans was in the stands with us celebrating all day. Ali Gordon had that that chance. Right. And he didn't do a damn thing. Okay. He's a local guy too. Let's give him a little bit of love. baby. I'll say this. I think they will be able to stop the run, um, but you got to mix up the pre-snap and the post-snap looks with this guy. Man, he's a veteran quarterback. He's seen it all. Whether y'all like it or not, those DBs do need to play press coverage every now and then. The things that have been killing this uh, defensive backfield, uh, uh, targets to bunch formations, close to cluster groups of receivers, tight trips, stack twins, all that kind of stuff. And also inside breaking routes. You guys know that inside breaking routes have been killing them. They took that away the last two games of the season yeah. against yeah. Oklahoma State and against Texas Tech. That's also, and I don't think it's a coincidence, where they played the most bump and run coverage they've played yeah. all year mm-hmm. long on the field side and the boundary side. I agree. Now, you got to do that against these big dogs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I know. They got three <laughs> NFL wide receivers. Yeah. But to take away the easy completions to force Penix to hold on to the ball just a half a second longer yeah. while that interior pressure is there. That's all we need. That's all you need. That's all we so, need. So this is, you're going to have to be judicious. you got to you got to roll the dice if you're PK. When are you going to play that bump and run coverage? Because yeah. you know what the adjustment is going to be. What did Oklahoma State do when Texas played a lot of press pump coverage? Over the, Over top. the top. Deep yeah. shots. Yeah. All right, double moves out enough. They're going to do a lot of that. And they got the personnel yeah. and the they got yeah. NFL talent to do it. So your guys got to hold up, but if you can make him hold the ball a second longer, I agree with Jay Hills, actually. I've seen the pressure get to him. Interior pressure freaks him out. That's he becomes erratic with interior pressure. Point. And he starts mm-hmm. to run around, and he makes real random erratic throws. That's the best way. And now, it may not always be with organically with just the D tackles. I think you got to bring the second level interior pressure. That's what Arizona State did. That's what mm-hmm. Oregon State yep. did. Mm-hmm. They doubled down on it. You can do that. I think PK will be ready for that. The truth is, guys, it will come down to those DBs, though. If mm-hmm. they can hold up in man-to-man coverage and at times, they're going to have to play press grown man style. Yep. DBU, baby. So, right. <laughs> here's my question, too. Right, We're talking about Brian Watts. Obviously, you got Muhammad. You mm-hmm. got Cook. You got Jade. What combination of guys you Ooh. think that you roll out there first? And then how long is the leash? Ooh, because that's we, good. We, we looking at an opportunity where... Boys can get exploited. You go bump and run, it's like, oh, snap. Yeah, yeah, that's a great point. And I wonder what the Tennessee breaker will be. Here's the question for Washington. Do you attack the safeties first or the young corners? Say safeties. Yeah. 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 No, they're, they're definitely yeah, going to so there you yeah. go. Bingo. Yeah. 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 What, so, what's yeah. the best yeah. combo of safety, though, in your opinion? I think because Derek Williams is out. Right. He's the best coverage safety, and he's a freshman. Right. Right. My point exactly. is you can't teach coverage. Guys yeah. either have that, and they, they grow up with that. Um Honestly, I think it's going to be Jaron Thompson, your elder statesman. I know he's vulnerable in coverage, but all your safeties are. But he's seen a lot, made plays in the Bama game, made Mark, plays yeah, in the yeah, games. Yeah, I'll yeah. take the big game guy. Uh, and honestly, 
I think you might be Taft Daddy. Mm-hmm. I know, yeah, I, guess I know some of y'all don't like mm-hmm. white safeties. I get it. All right. It's Simon Sound. Oh, some of y'all don't be in position. I love Ray Diddy. Ray Diddy won 21. Started more games than any of the DB in the history of DBU. All right, I'm a fan of Dylan Haynes. Top five all time in interceptions. Yeah, yeah, it's just your DBU. But yeah. some of y'all still hating. Nah, no, I love white that. Safety. He just gave us the white safety yes. history. <laughs> <laughs> That is how long you take been around. Three of them. Since 1960, he just gave us the greatest thing. Tap that deserves his name. We play with we play with Blake. Blake, 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 Mm-hmm. I would probably have him at safety. If they go after mm-hmm. the safeties, just move him to safety. I like that. And then maybe your young, one of those young busts like can step that. in at, you know, that nickel back for you. Honestly, the truth is, and I know they haven't done it. Maybe they're working it. You can put Terrence Brooks at nickel, man. Yeah. And you can move Malik Muhammad and Ryan Watts out the corner. And then Jaday Barron at safety. And I think you'll still I, hold up mm-hmm. really, I, really I well. like that because I believe that that helps limit that deep ball. Mm-hmm. And I'd love to see them have to march it. I love mm-hmm. our ability to march it. Yep. Mm-hmm. I would love to see them have to march it. Yep. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, what's that look like now. I, just, I just like ba- I just like Baron when he when he's like when they throw those little screens uh, around him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He'll he'll like, ball play. Yeah. 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 Today, yeah. Yeah. today, yeah. today, yeah. today, today yeah. Baron yeah. is a Local football guy. player. <laughs> he is a football player. He 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 listen. He wanted what they call he can play that star position. He can actually he's a he is an asset in the run game. He can he gonna take away the flats. He'll play the the man coverage. He understands zone. He a senior leader. Like he. That's a that's a football player. No, I agree. Right? Can, can so I would move him around if I'm vulnerable. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I'm, yeah, I'm putting sense. him there. Uh-uh. You saw whenever we talked about a local guy, how much he lit up. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Shout out to Jay Baron, Pflugerville Conley. Yeah. What's up, baby? By the way, May May Okafor. And, uh, I do want to I do want to say that secondary wise preparation is going to be key. Yeah. I feel like the rest of the defense can go out there and kind of play free, be those dogs. Secondary preparation is going to be key for this yeah. game, and I just don't like. I'm, I, I like y'all talking about moving bodies and making adjustments, but I don't want to put too much too on much. these guys' plates. That's true. When you got NFL wide receivers, you got to go out there and play free. Yeah. You got to go be you. You can't be thinking. I'm. I'm just. I'm hoping the preparation is is doing what we needed to do during this time. I agree. I think if you put like if I'm looking at my DB room, I'm telling those young guys that you want at corner. I'm telling mm-hmm. them the, the the technique I want them to play, and I want them to lock into that. Mm-hmm. I'm pulling Jade over to the side, and I'm saying, bro, you got to be that racer. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm moving you back here to make mm-hmm. those guys right. Yeah. Yep. Listen, because I, I need for the reasons you just said mm-hmm. I don't need them locked in to four different keys mm-hmm. I need them playing I need them playing ball and getting mm-hmm. into their zone Same and get fast. that growing confidence of when you deflected a pass or mm-hmm. when you made a hit I need that to happen so today you got to make everybody right mm-hmm. I'm putting that on his shoulder I think he can handle it I think he can yeah, handle bro, it too I man too. Yeah. I know For y'all sure. are talking about backing him up at safety I know we kind of talked about it a little bit me and you Nick um, I like him in the box bro I know, he I and DJ too <laughs> yeah. like I, I like him in the box I like him making plays on the line of scrimmage man he he plays fast and he's violent. I he think does. we need. I think we need to set the tone early on him. But look, they've already moved him around. When they had to move in the corner, they yeah, moved in the yeah, corner. Injuries, yeah. Saying yes and options. I mean, they did everything with him. Remember, he wasn't even supposed to play the U of H game. And oh, threw him out there. Right. 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 I ain't never seen him. I ain't never seen him. Bro came. Bro came. It's like when you watching a movie. When you watching a movie, you just like, I thought he died earlier. I thought he died. He came out. He came out. I was like, look at that injury report. Yeah, you look at the injury report. He knocks himself off. Yeah, hold up. Scratch that off. Well, I think. Look, I think that's that's awesome. I think the the other piece that I haven't heard anyone talking about is the special teams, and yeah. I think we have a phenomenal special teams. I think Washington has a good special team. They have a great return man. They have a good kicker. Mm-hmm. They have a punter with limited experience. So, I mean, I think there's there's something in there about where we can we can make some big plays during the game. Like, what are y'all's thoughts on on special teams? Your for this favorite game? player. Yeah, go ahead, Dive. Come say, on. Say the Dive name. Say, the name. Oh. say his name. Listen, this, this, Bert Auburn. I mean, Bert, listen, first of all, did he ever get that deal? No, no. man. That, Come on, our, man. We're, we're working on it. We have a fan club. We have a fan club meeting club next meeting. week, so we're working oh, on it, man. No, I, I believe, I truly believe that like if we can end every drive in a kick, which is the you know mm-hmm. most cliche thing to say, but if those kicks can either be like extra points or field goals, then mm-hmm. we'll take them. I, I know it's gonna be one of those situations where we we have to be we're playing in the dome. First of all, we're playing a home game in a yeah, dome. It will Let's be, be clear. It will be. We're playing a home game in a dome. You got to make those. I got to be able to get to the 38, 35 and, mm-hmm. and trust that I got points on the board. Mm-hmm. My defense has to see that go up there. Mm-hmm. They, those rewards have to be, those efforts have to be rewarded, right? And I believe we got the kicking game to be able to do that. 
And we've also seen the the uh, Texas Tech is the most recent, but the plays we've been able to make in the punt game as well. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. So it's like if if we can get those kind of momentum shifting plays one way or another because of special teams, like if we can, let's just call it erase six points one way and go the other way with those points, then that's going to be huge. Yeah, USC had a big block punt that helped flip mm-hmm. flip that game early, yeah. Ooh, and I yeah. think. Keelan does a phenomenal job on these. I think Keelan's going to be such a big key to this game, whether it's the kick return, whether it's pump block, whether it's just tackling on special teams. He's he's definitely a spark. If I'm not mistaken, Texas had a block punt last year in the Alamo Bowl. Yeah, let's not forget that Kalen DeBoer has. I don't mean to be the the dark cloud here, no, but Kalen DeBoer's cloud. got a month too. No, no, so, yeah. you've been the dark cloud. We got to tie. We got to keep it a little bit even. But all right, so let's move to third down. So for you guys, who will be the MVP? And we're going to take it from each side. Who is the MVP for y'all? on Texas, on the offensive mm. side, and why? Like, And mainly, mm. why are they key? This man right here. Mm. X marks the spot. I think Xavier Worthy is going to be the difference maker, the X factor, I should say, in this game. Number one, I, I don't know how they defend him, right? And, and we talked about Muhammad. Yeah, he's a good player, but it's really only him. You got Dominique Hampton, who's back there, who's a good safety guy, plays all over the field. But it's not too many guys that have defended Xavier Worthy. And I'm talking about Kool-Aid McKinstry included, mm-hmm. who's going to be probably the top corner off of the board. Mm-hmm. People just not doing it. And whenever you got an Adonai Mitchell on the other side, you can't yeah, necessarily man. bracket cover a guy like Xavier Worthy. And then he, he'll pop your hamstring off if you try to run against him, right? <laughs> this, this dude can actually, he can actually yeah. fly. And then the other reason why I think he will be the X Factor, I know we're talking about just from the offensive perspective, but what he brings to the return game as a punt returner, yep. I think is going to be key and critical for him to make his case to be the MVP in this game. Dude, we talked about get him in space. What better player do you want in space mm-hmm. for some missed tackles? It's not too many of them that's better than Xavier Worthy in space on this offense, and I mm-hmm. think he's going to be the difference maker with Yak, with being able to hit the deep shot, and then also in his return game, and I think that's what makes him so dangerous as the offensive MVP of this game. Well, and they have great receivers, and I heard it said over and over again, they face the best receivers in practice every day. They don't have someone like Xavier. Nah, they no, do not have. Nah, no. Very few teams do. They yeah. do not have just a burner <laughs> like that that, just that, that that does it. And Dunze is incredible, but he's a very different type of receiver. Very so I think, mm-hmm. I think that's going to be good for us with their defensive backs. I agree. Hills, who you got on offense? Quinn. I'm going to tell you why. Because skill for skill, we match up. And there's other there's there's parts of the game or the parts of the field where we may you know we may fall second to them and them second to us et cetera that's football, but I think uh, the the just the the nature of the position in itself when your quarterback is playing well, everybody is is mm-hmm. kind of y'all know how it goes key, and, and that and that spreads the defense as well. When that quarterback is moving that offense when he is in full control almost like a field general everybody benefits everybody yeah. is <laughs> locked in at a different kind of level right yeah. and I think I don't need him to out duel. Michael Penix, I need him to show up and play the 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 highest capable ball that he's able to play. Give me what that looks like, and I and I take Texas by ten. Now let, let's also highlight that. And, and I was going back and forth between Quinn too because big game Quinn is a real thing. Real talk. Mm-hmm. We've seen big mm-hmm. game Quinn. We we go back to the the Red River rivalry last year. Mm-hmm. Obviously, that Oklahoma team is completely different, but that was kind of the first big game that Quinn got to play all the way through, right? We yep, saw him yep. early Alabama, and mm-hmm. we was like, oh, snap. Them boy, big, big half Quinn that game. Right. <laughs> at 134 yards. Yeah, big quarter. Yeah, I heard it. Like, oh, snap, big quarter, right. <laughs> but then he come back, Red River game, blows it out the mm-hmm. door, come back even in this game last year, Alamo Bowl. He put yeah. up his yep. best statistical He outdoed Penix in this game. Yeah. Really he really best statistical He impressed me last year. Now you come in this year and you start seeing the big games, obviously Alabama. Even in the Red River rivalry game, it didn't look good. We know that. But he still got his team the lead with a minute, 17 seconds left, playing his worst game of the yeah. season. Yeah, his worst and game then, had you winning with a minute left. Exactly. Can, can, I, can I bring this up, though? We've talked about this for Sark, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Sark seems to do a lot of extra preparation for big games, right? Yep. The, the Bama game this year, Oklahoma, obviously. We know coaches put in right. extra prep for the big you games. Mm-hmm. And, and Quinn is at his best when he's well-prepped. 
Yes. Right? Yeah. He's always hitting them first reads. He's up place that he's comfortable yeah. in, that he's yeah. been running. You can tell in practice for yeah. weeks or in spring ball, whatever it was for the Bama game. Um, so with the extra time to prepare, I agree with Jay Hills, and I'm doubling down on what my, uh, Fozzie said there. He's going to be crisp early on because mm-hmm. you know Sark is in his bag, and mm-hmm. Sark is only in his bag. And he said this, actually, about Malik and about Arch. Uh, when he was asked about Malik playing, he said, I only run plays my quarterbacks are comfortable in. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, I only run stuff they like. Mm-hmm. I lash them well. I mean, we yeah. can figure out we what they right. like. We're going to run what they like. Yeah. At this point, he's going to run what Quinn likes and what Quinn's good at. And that's what we've seen lately. That's why Quinn has had his best game of the season yep. in that Oklahoma State game. Best game we've ever seen him play. Best game he's ever played at football, period. Yeah. High school right. or college. Yeah. I think he's trending. I'm with you. I think yeah. Sark gonna have him ready you, to go. I, I really do believe that. You give yeah. me a, you you look at the end when that's when that clock is zero zero zero. If I looked up and Quinn played the game he needed to play, all things considered, I think Texas is going to a national championship. Mm-hmm. I agree like, with that. I, it, it, all things considered, if Quinn plays a game he needs to play, Texas is going to the national championship. No doubt. And I think I think he, he's been showing that confidence. Like we see a different, <laughs> it's a, definitely a different Quinn as this season has progressed. And I think the the tough part for him against OU, and that was the game he struggled the most where he came out. And I think it was because he looked on the other side of the ball and he's like, this isn't this isn't what we scouted. This didn't mm-hmm. look like this last year. Mm-hmm. The tape doesn't look like this. And, and OU came out, they came to play. And I think that if he can be solid and he can do what he's been doing and just, and like you said, not out dual Penix. He's not going to, you're not going to out dual Penix, mm-hmm. but just be solid like that. I, I totally, totally agree. D- oh, DJ, man, who you got? I, man, it's... And I'm just still going off for the MVPs that they picked, um, especially when you talk about Quinn, when you talk about Xavier Worthy, because nobody's like him. But I think A.D. Mitchell, I think mm-hmm. A.D. Mitchell, just because you got a couple guys on the other side on the opposing team that, that are NFL guys, and, and he measures up with them. Hey, how, oh, yeah. you know, how, you know, he's big too. He's, he can run too. So, Let's let's see what you can do, and I and I know what's going through his head right now. I'm gonna have some 50-50 balls. Quinn's gonna give me some 50-50 opportunities, and I can come down with the ball just like them guys can. Mm-hmm. So I think getting letting him get going, let him because we got Xavier Worthy, and everybody knows how blazing fast he is. He's gonna have probably more attention on him. So AD's like, all right, not that I have it easy, but I, I'm gonna have the second best guy, or whatever, mm-hmm. and, and and I need to go to work and. Help Quinn get this MVP. I, you know, I, I'm I'm almost changing it. Uh, I, I say eighty. <laughs> I'm, I'm almost changing Quinn, it. Quinn's well, got to Quinn's, Quinn's got to be Quinn's got to be. Quinn's got to be. If AD plays his yeah. game, yeah. Yeah. I say he go off. Guy. It's gonna be Quinn. Yeah, oh, yeah. and, and I, I love yeah. what Rob B said when he talked about um, um, only. Then this is good ca- characteristics of a really good coach. Is saying, hey, yes. I only run plays at my quarterback because mm-hmm. yeah, I've been in practice before and. College and in NFL, where you you out there and and, and stuff not working, coach like we ain't running, we ain't running. That ain't happening. I don't care if it's a good play or not. Nope, not doing it. So so having a um, (laughs) having a month to prepare, man, Sark's gonna be in his bag. We're gonna start early. Watch, we're gonna start early, and and after that. Then everything's gonna settle on who's gonna adjust. That, when it's, that when it's just beat. football. Yeah. When it's football. Yeah. 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 Yep. Alex, well, got... First of all, going last sucks, man. Y'all gonna take. Every, y'all, y'all gonna <laughs> take the. We need a rule where nobody can pick right. the same person. I'm gonna say everybody from Austin is who I. <laughs> is who I believe. Hey, y'all know my agenda. Yeah. Anyways, um, I'm too, baby. Uh, <laughs> I got two guys. Um, initially, I was gonna say AD. Wait, you can pick two guys. Well, well, I mean, y'all took everybody. Y'all took everyone. Been the rules. May I explain? Go ahead. Well, no, I, my two guys, initially I was going to say AD, but Derek took it. And the reason, my reasoning for AD is he's going to find the end zone. And you know, if you score touchdowns, you're going to get that MVP Ooh, trophy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know what it is about AD, but he has a knack of finding the end zone. He like, I know that's what, what I'm is. saying. What's up? You know where he's from. <laughs> the H? H? Okay. Hey, hey, don't, don't interrupt my segment <laughs> so for that right there. Don't, don't interrupt it for that. But, <laughs> but yeah, I think AD is going to find the end zone. I just want to speak on AD a little bit more, man. If When we're looking at it, has there been in college football a more impactful transfer portal guy? Mm. And I'm not saying it's AD, but he's got to be up there. He's got to be up there for this Texas team. You got to keep that in mind. Mm. But since he was already taken, I'm a kind of transition into Jatavion Sanders, number zero. Mm. And 
I have a love-hate relationship with this tight end. Not him personally, but the way we use him. Yeah. Because I feel like he doesn't get the ball enough. I'm looking on the field. I'm looking at his stature. I'm looking at his athletic ability. And I'm like, there's nobody in college ball that can guard this man. Yeah. And I'm looking in the league and how they use tight ends. And it's a matchup nightmare. And I just feel like we don't feed him enough. So it'll be interesting to see where Sark kind of pick and chooses where to go to number zero. And it'll be interesting to watch. That's money. Yeah, right. and and I, I agree with what you said. Or like Oregon did a great job with uh, Ferguson had a big game against them. He yeah. had two touchdowns in one of the games. Uh, Herbert's little brother had touchdown. That tight end is a little bit leaky on their defense, and so that that, that bodes very well for us if we can figure out how to get him. But the, the key though is can we get him the ball? The rock, yeah. Every, I mean, everyone thought he was that guy was going to have fifteen hundred yards this year, and and he doesn't yet. But we'll see. I, I mean, how, how do you? How do you <laughs> but how do you shift from taking away? That's that's the conundrum. It's a yeah. good conundrum, yeah. right? It's, I mean, he had it whenever he was with USC with Reggie Bush and all them. He had it whenever he was at Alabama. It's it's mm-hmm. good problems, but how do you take the ball away from Xavier Worthy or Adonai Mitchell? Yeah. When when like it's like man, it's only it's, it's good. It's only the good thing it's, it's only one, one ball. Balls. But the good thing about that is is that I think that that gives you the optionality of not having to force it. Exactly. It's like mm-hmm. if, if this is if this is zero's day, if this is the day for yeah. zero, it's the day it's for zero. Day. Yep. Yeah. If this is the day for one, it's the day for one. Yeah. You know, and so on and so forth. So I'm like that that alone with allows us to be more dangerous. And then one thing we haven't touched on, this is a home game, fellas. Mm-hmm. This is a this is a home game. Like I'm I'm interested to see how that place is rocking. Last game mm-hmm. was too. Big twelve title game no, was a home yeah, game. How, yeah. how many? How many? How many? How, yeah. yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right you're you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. I thought I ain't gonna lie. I got defensive. I thought he was talking. About, I thought he was bringing up the Alamo ball. I'm just no. like, well, how many guys did we have? No, no. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. No. We on the same page. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
And they are, I mean, them two, they they they're treacherous twins. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They are mean. <laughs> I love I love the fact that they're not nice. They're not just good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They yeah. actually are mean yeah, people. I, bullies, I, I hope they have a bad day that morning. <laughs> That's what I hope. I hope they stu- I hope they stub their toe that morning. <laughs> as soon as he wakes up that morning, I hope something bad happens. Is- <laughs> just because like I need them mean at that game. I need them. Well, mean. that was that famous moment where sweat pushed. It was it Jay? It was Jalen Ford off the tackle, oh, yeah, yeah. and Jalen yeah. got up like, yeah. like you saw me, no, you know that was me. But I, but I agree. Like it is, there's this. If nastiness. they show up in in, I don't even want it to be close. I know that this this group of five is the best group of five in the country, but guard center guard. Mm-hmm. If they dominate that matchup, if they dominate that matchup, I'm very interested to see what happens on the back end. Mm-hmm. I'm just interested to see what that means. That's good. You know what I mean? So yeah. I'm picking. I'm going to go with Sweat. I got to go with Jaron Thompson. I, I think we talked about big games and the opportunities that present themselves in these moments. The defense has taken a ton of flack, yeah. right, especially on the secondary side of the ball, especially whenever you say, who do you attack, the young boys, or do you attack the safeties? And without hesitation, <laughs> me and Jay both <laughs> said safeties. Yeah. It, was, it was not even a second thought in our minds, but – It's a perfect opportunity, right? Because they've been slept on. Mm -hmm. They've shown on tape that they've struggled. They've shown on tape that it's hard for them sometimes to cover the deep passes. They've shown on tape they not necessarily a great matchup whenever they are one-on-one with the receiver. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, you've heard all that all season long. That hasn't just been a one-game, two-game thing. No, you've heard that throughout the course of the season how do you change that in this moment? What have you done in preparation from the Big 12 championship game to prepare yourself come January 1st in the Superdome to say, hey, I'm the most prepared I've ever been to go mm-hmm. face these NFL caliber receivers mm-hmm. so that I can put my name in the NFL mm-hmm. roster whenever that time comes about. And I think Jaron Thompson has that perfect opportunity to really submit to what it means to be a DB at the University of Texas and to play safety the right and the correct way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I would. I, I would have to go with uh, Jalen Ford. Obviously, I'm uh, a linebacker Sorry, leaner. Not biased at all. I know. <laughs> I know. But I, 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 I just, I, I just, I just Get think, I, I think uh, Jalen hasn't this year got the accolades as he got as he had last year. So right. I think this year he's 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 on a. I mean, he's got an opportunity to win a national championship. So. Uh, all that in front of him, even though he he didn't get the personal awards that he wanted this year, Big Twelve Defensive Player of the Year, obviously gave it gave it up to his guy in front of him doing a lot of work mm-hmm. for him. But uh, um, Jalen is, I, I think he 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 kind of centers, even though our defense does really good. Jalen's in the middle of that. Yeah, right. Yeah. He's in. A, I, we got a lot of guys doing a lot of different things. Jalen's in the middle of that. I think he's a really smart player, and I just think. From the passing game, when it comes to RPOs, when it comes to um, plugging runs or just um, chasing Penix down or, or being able to get in windows and, and knock balls down, I think Jalen Jalen's going to be a key guy. He can. I'm not reaching. I'm not saying uh, um, Anthony Hill needs to be an MVP or something yeah. like that. No, Jalen Ford can do that for us mm-hmm. this game to help us get to the national championship, and I think he will. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm not cheating, but it's got to be PK. That's too much. Mm, That's just too mm. much to neutralize and stop for Washington. They got mm. first round quarterback, first round tackle. Mm. They got a first round wide receiver. Yeah. I just can't two, say it's just one, two of them. Two of them. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I, yeah, three NFL guys are definitely mm. playing wide receiver. I can't say it's just one guy. It's got to be the game plan overall. Fozzie mentioned this earlier. Um, they got to make sure the pressure packages are on point. You're going up against the best offensive line in the country, so you got to make sure a pressure package. But they've only allowed 11 sacks this year. Guys, that's less oh, than a sack a game. Yeah. That's crazy. So if you get a sack in this game, you're already ahead of the average. Mm. You're, already, you're, already, yeah. so you're already doing well. That's what I'm saying. The pressure pack just got to be on point. The, the young DBs and their technique, I love that you uh, you brought up earlier. You don't want them thinking too much. You want them focused right on just, hey, we got one assignment. Cover that guy. Mm. That's your assignment. You want them to kind of simplify the process for them so they can just play really free. That's going to be really important for the young DBs. And I also think Jalen Ford is going to be important. Teams that like, like the uh, Washington Huskies that play with RPOs yeah. uh, that actually use their tight ends and use a lot of misdirection. Guys, this, this offense is essentially a doppelganger of Sark's offense. Mm-hmm. The only thing that's different about it really is the fact they operate at a slower pace, like 75th in the country in plays per minute, and Sark wanted to throw a lot of deep balls. They just weren't good at it, but this team is good at throwing the deep balls. Yeah. 
And so I just think PK's got to be, and PK will have a lot of help, right? The, the defensive coordinator guy, PK knows him. Yep. Yeah. He was on PK's staff. Yeah. They, they messed with him familiarity there, man. No question about it. So he'll know that. And by the way, PK knows the offensive line yeah, coach. That's his best friend. They were, yeah. yeah. They were the line <laughs> right. coach from when, um, when, um, Jimmy, uh, Jimmy Lake was on, uh, the head coach. So there's a lot of familiarity on this staff. Jeff Choate really knows this staff really well. I think this has got to be the, the game of the, the, the season for PK. Calling it. I think he's got to be the MVP, man. Because if he doesn't win the chess match within a game against Washington, I, I, I don't know if I like Texas chances. But mm-hmm. I trust that he will. Yeah. So okay. that's why I do. Sure. Here you go. Um, for me, I think it's got to be the depth of this D-line. And I think that gets lost a lot because we have two superstars in the middle. But I think one of the strengths of this D-line is that the, the amount of depth we got across the board on this D-line. Mm-hmm. And one thing Bo Davis does really, really well is he rotates. Even with them superstars in the middle, he still yep. rotates, man, to keep fresh bodies. And that's the name of the game up front. Fresh bodies against tired offensive linemen. So I think the depth of this D-line has to show up this game. Just because we've talked about it all podcasts, they've got some dangerous guys on the edges mm. at the receiver position. And the quickest way to neutralize that is a rush, especially a rush up the middle. Yeah. So I'm talking about guys sure. like Trill Carter. I'm talking about guys like Broughton. You got the edges like Burke. You got you just we got depth up front, and we and those guys that are getting rotated in, they might not get all the opportunities, but in the amount of snaps that they have, they've got to produce. And I think that'll be the difference. Yeah. And, and on that, do you? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Can, I, can go. I highlight? Yeah. If I would have known. We could pick multiple people <laughs> on both MVP yeah. choices. Ah, and I, hey, I might want to. We'll put some rules change. around. Hey, hey, I'm, hey, I'm hey, just man. saying. How about I, this, I though? We'll, we'll let Fozzie go last next time. So yeah, yeah, go yeah, yeah, yeah. let me go first. Uh, let me have to pick it a little. Uh, <laughs> do, you, do you see them breaking tendency? I know you talk a lot on breaking tendency, Rod. Do you see them after watching the success OU had of of speeding up the tempo, keeping things moving, making it so we can't sub our guys. Do you foresee UW trying to do something like that in this for, game? For me, whenever you look at the preparation of an offense, it doesn't matter what stylistic offense you play. You always have a no huddle package or right. you always have what we yeah. call a NASCAR package. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not as if that they don't have it. It's a more so a question of when do they want to utilize it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I do think that'll be part of the implementation that they want to put in there. Number one, that's the first way to neutralize guys that weigh over 300 pounds. And yep. if you got Sweat and Murphy running sideline to sideline and they can't necessarily go up and down the field or penetrate in the way that they are used to doing, then you create opportunities to get them in a sub position where you got to bring somebody on and off. And let's say they keep their same personnel on there, run another play that's a free penalty yardage, and then you get a free shot downfield. That's what always scares me with big guys that are the most impactful in the game. What happens, you take it sideline to sideline. That could be a choice. But everybody has a NASCAR package, what we used to call it. I think they do step into that, like we said. And like you said, you want to be the dark cloud. Yes, they've had (laughs) a month to prepare as well. So they're going to show something or a wrinkle that they haven't necessarily showcased over the course of their time playing in the Pac-12 championship and throughout the Pac-12 season. I think that's one of the keys that they'll be able to throw out as a curveball. Yeah. Yep. All right. Well, let's. Uh, so for for fourth down, and we'll start over here. So uh, so Oak yeah, doesn't have yeah, to. Oak doesn't have to go. go back. Baby, yeah. Here we go. We'll move it. We'll flip it. So <laughs> that means your answer got to be phenomenal. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, and you won't have as much time to think about this. But what okay. is your game prediction, including the score? Oh, we okay. Um, <laughs> oh, 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 I'm not y'all, y'all, y'all seen the oh, quiz. It's okay. not like I surprised you. Oh, okay, been okay, been in the ballpark of these all year. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go this way. So I think there's gonna be points, a lot of points in this game. I think when you give both of these teams a month to prepare, I think there's only so much a defense can do at the college level. So I think it's gonna be a shootout. So the scores are gonna be high. Prediction wise, I'm gonna go. Whew, I'm going to go 42 to 42 to 34. I, I like that score okay. right there. I like yeah, I, I don't think it's like, I think it's close, but I think we open it up and I think it's going to be a high scoring game. All right, Rod. I agree with the high scoring thing. I think it comes down to the last possession. Ooh. I really do. And I'm a little concerned about that because it, although Quinn, I do believe has the clutch gene in him somewhere. Yeah. He hasn't had a lot of opportunities for game winning drives. This kid, Michael Penix, grown man, I shouldn't say mm-hmm. kid. He, he's got five of them in his career. He's got two of them this season. I mean, he's yeah. comfortable <clears throat> when it's like, oh, game's on the line. You got to go win. He's like, no, no big deal. It's what I do. 
Uh, so I worry a little bit about that scenario, but I do think this is when Quinn's probably got to showcase it if Texas ends up with that, that last drive. So I got Texas winning 33-31. Mm-hmm. I think defense shows up a little bit more than everybody thinks. This is time to prepare. Defense is usually – think about Texas defense last year. It actually was a decent game That's plan last year. Yeah, yeah. yeah and, 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 the and I would like to point year. out we had eight people sit out of that game. Our yeah. whole offense was run through deserving. Exactly. So B. John Robinson and Roshan Johnson, yeah. and neither one of them were available, and we still looking at a one-score No overshown. Game. And I would like to tell you, all these people that we talking about for Washington, they was on that team last year too. I just want to throw that yeah, out there. Let's right. keep going. Uh, was that at me? I was on that. I was waiting on I'm got to throw it I couldn't let this episode end without me getting that one out. I get that one. I found that in my study. I, uh, I, I totally agree. I think it's going to be high scoring. I'm going I'm going high on this. I'm going 44 to 38. I got to make sure Bird gets three field goals in there. So I always got to check that box. But I, I do think, look, I think both defenses are actually going to play well. But I think there's only so much you can do on these against these offenses, right? Like it's, it's whoever... Whoever breaks less, I think, is the key because there's going to be lots of bending and, and people shouldn't get down about teams moving the ball. It's going to happen. Mm-hmm. Two, these are two of the best offenses. I mean, they are the two best offenses left in college mm-hmm. football, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. So that that's we'll see what happens. Yeah, so I, I believe whoever gets the ball last is going to yeah. have the best <laughs> chance to win it. Obviously, you know, we, we want Texas to come out with the win to go to the national championship. Man, but I would have to I, – I would say 30 – Four to thirty-one. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's definitely going to be a high-scoring game. Burke, you know, with a with a walk-off kick. That, that's mm-hmm. going. Mm-hmm. 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 Nick would love that. 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 Nick I don't think there will be a lot of points early. They're going because, you know, everybody thinks it's going to be a bunch of air mm-hmm. raid. And it, it will get there. It will get there. But the I first quarter, so. it'll be a seven to seven game. And then, then, it, then it'll get up there. That's what mm-hmm. I think. Yeah, I'm going 38-34. Burt get some love. I in swear there. that was mine. That was not <laughs> too, I changed. I Going last sucks. You said it in the middle of what you said. You went before me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Give me 38 34. That's, that's right. what I, okay. I feel comfortable about that. I think it's a Texas win. I got to make sure I say that all oh, yeah. as well. Uh, it's just, it's going to be a hard fought game, man. You got to find a way. Who's going to come down, make the plays when the plays mm-hmm. need to be made? And I think Texas does just more than enough to be able to ensure that that happens. I'm I'm sticking with my answer too. I'm saying 38, 34, but the, the way I see it, or would love to see it, is you dub on the field offense, Texas on the field defense. It, I wanted to. You want 34, you want that to be the last possession? 34, 38 in Texas. You want our defense stop. out there in the last. 34, 38. I like te- that. Okay. 34, 38 in Texas gets a stop in the Ooh, game zone. To, wow, to, to, that'd be James impressive. Point, that'd be they impressive. They won two games this yeah, year with true. goal line stands. Yeah. K State and U of H. Yeah. Thirty four, thirty eight. Won the game. Texas <laughs> gets a stop yeah. and the game's over. That'd be amazing. Point, though, yeah. Yeah. I would love that. Yeah. 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 I would love it too. I see, uh, yeah. I'm gonna be nervous, but I'm gonna love. Oh, I'm gonna be nervous, DJ. Last drive, Phoenix out there. Sitting on my hands. Yeah. That's what's up. Y'all gonna see Jay Hills get arrested for street. <laughs> <laughs> as, as, as long as I can, as long as I can get out in enough time to make it to the national anthem in Houston. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah, yeah. Gonna be warming up them vocals. Yes. All right. So for the Hail Mary, let's. I, I think there's a lot of talk in the media that there are just these myths almost that have become facts mm-hmm. where everyone's just assumes, you know, Texas defensive backs are bad, blah, 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 blah. All these pieces that we just hear and they're starting to get accepted as facts. So I want you guys to tell me if these are myths or if they're true. Okay. And, it, and the wording on them is quotes I've pulled, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's that drastic. So first myth, Texas has a weak defensive backfield. I've heard that many times. Um, we'll let you we'll let the yeah, defensive back say right away. Yeah. <laughs> I, in a week, obviously, I'm going to take a little bit of offense. Well, and that's what I mean week. is the wording. Yes, I think but that's I, I will key. say that they don't have a lot of coverage specialists in the secondary, and that's what they're recruiting now, actually. That's yeah. why Derek Williams yeah. is the best coverage safety. He's a freshman. Uh, young Malik Muhammad is probably one of their best coverage mm-hmm. uh, specialists at corner, and he's young bug. Terrence Brooks, young bug, coverage specialist. The guys that are bringing in these recruiting classes, they're, they're recruiting what you can't coach. You can't coach coverage. Trust me, guys. It's it's something that's innate, it's something that's programmed early. You guys can have a great, uh, you know, skill set overall, like Keaton Crawford. Guys, long, rangy, fast. Doesn't mean you can teach them how to cover. So I think they're just figuring that out, and that's why the defense is a little bit last in roster construction. The defensive backfield is. Think about it, it's the last. It's the last 
position group that they're addressing. Look right. at the, look at this recruiting class. It's like six DBs yeah, in the damn yeah. recruiting yeah. class. And they're, they're cover guys. And they're all cover guys. Yeah. So it's, and that's what it is. It's just it, so I think it's just taking more longer than they thought. Wait, wait, so is it a myth Man. or a fact? It's it's <laughs> both. It's because it's not me. Whoa. 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 Okay. Terrence Brooks and Malik Muhammad and Ryan Watts, they aren't that bad in coverage. It's yeah. the safeties that are bad. So the defensive backfield as a whole, I think it's, it's a little bit mixed. And, yeah, and, it, decent, and so. I think, I mean, I have in my notes that the injuries, people forget about the injuries. Mm-hmm. Watts has been injured so much of the year. Catalan was, Catalan was out for a while. Jaron mm-hmm. Thompson was out. We've had a lot of guys out. And that's the excuse I've heard made for one of our other myths about Washington's defensive backfield was, oh, they've been injured, but they're finally healthy. And, and I agree with you. We're still not cover guys. Yeah. But I do think that that has affected it. So, yeah. all right. Yeah. Washington is worst pass defense in Texas, for the record. Well, mm-hmm. then that goes yes. to our next. <laughs> the next myth <laughs> is, or myth, or myth or fact is, Washington has a weak defensive backfield. I have heard that as well. Yeah. So, who wants to take that one? Mm. I, I mean, I watched enough UW. Mm-hmm. I, I, I understand why that would be said. Gotcha. I'll be honest. They, 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 they play. That's an aggressive group. Yeah, mm-hmm. they, they have no fear. Yeah, they fly. Every time, every time they, they line it down, I can tell by the style that they play. They believe they the best. Mm. Now, I've seen them be tested, and mm. I've seen them not pass those tests. Yeah, <laughs> you know, like like yeah. to be clear, the the one of those two uh, Michael Penix comeback victories was U Dub mid season that you're mm-hmm. talking yeah. about. I mean, I don't understand why I wasn't in the, I wasn't on the headset, but coach decided not to punt the ball on fourth and three from the fifty. Jay must have lost some money on that game. You know? like, he's still talking about it was a bad weekend for me. <laughs> but, but, but that said, I mean, Ben Penix throws the fade ball and you know uh um UW goes up by three. Oregon gets the ball back, marches right down the field with no time with no timeouts underneath the minute. Mm, right. Lines up the field goal team on a very makeable field goal yep. and pushed it. Mm. The deep. I'm not saying that it. Listen, that's a comeback yep. win. And that's a dub, and they earned it. I'm saying I've seen these DBs get carved up. Go back and look mm-hmm. at the Pac-12 championship. Mm-hmm. Bo Nix started that game. I kid you not. They ran sprint protection on one of them. You've seen this mm-hmm. a sprint on on third and short. It's like it's you got a spot route. You got it's not many. It's flood mm-hmm. concept. There's no real places to go with it if it's not there. Mm-hmm. My boy started turning around and scrambling the other way. Yep. Right <laughs> on the sprint this way. He, st- he yeah. scrambled away from his end zone. <laughs> With no help. The next drive, he threw the ball and hit the referee. Yep. That's how he started that game. You want to know how they got back into that game? Over the top, the bombing game. them, mm-hmm. killing them. What I'm talking about, they throw, they threw a cross route. He stepped out of a tackle. He go for like 60, 70 down yeah, the yeah. sideline, stepped yeah. out of another tackle. I'm not afraid of these DBs. So, yes, I believe they weak sauce. Mm-hmm. I believe that they got heart, but I just think they weak sauce. Except mm-hmm. for... um. Muhammad's nice. Muhammad. He's really yeah. good. Muhammad's nice. All the DBs play with Muhammad's spirit. Mm-hmm. They just don't got his talent. There you go. Well, I'm gonna throw. I'm gonna throw out a stat I like that you. I found that's really interesting. Uh, so five out of the 13 teams, I believe they have 13 games, and mm-hmm. so so they played technically 12 teams because they played Oregon twice. Five out of those teams were ranked in the top eight in passing offense. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I think they, they we're judging them a little a little bit differently against offenses that are yeah. high caliber really passing offenses. But to be offenses. honest, I, I, I'm, I'm curious if we go a step further and look at the history of the Pac-12. That's that confidence. I agree. I agree. Mm-hmm. Well, it is, but I would say this year they have the best quarterbacks oh, in yeah. college for Absolutely. sure. Absolutely. 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 Some of the best offenses. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I guess the counterpoint would be Texas. Has Texas faced quarterback talent of that caliber? No, not even close. Yeah. It's the best quarterback mm-hmm. that they face. Correct. Dylan right. Gabriel was the second best quarterback mm-hmm. they faced. What happened yeah. there? You can kind of go down. So Texas has not faced quarterback mm-hmm. talent or passing off is as sophisticated, like and yet they have been subpar. So what's the That's excuse fair. for Texas? Mm-hmm. That's fair. Yeah. Yeah. That's a really good point. Yeah. All right, my next myth, and I'm going to give some things. It actually makes to... me question why you said yes and no. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm a DB from yeah. Texas, man. Yeah. Yeah. All right, I got yeah, yeah. yeah. it in his eyes. When he huh? said yes and no, I knew what that meant. Yeah. 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 I knew exactly I what that meant. I got to call that game <laughs> for a little bit. I got it. I got it. All right, so so this one, I'm going to throw out some stats just because I know everyone's going to fire back instantly, and I know how we all feel because this is, you know, where people know. <laughs> People know we root for Texas, I think. So, and, and don't answer right away. Just Texas isn't susceptible to the run, so Washington won't try. 
Here's, here's, I'm going to throw out these facts. OU, 43 carries, 201 yards, three touchdowns. Dylan Gabriel have 14 carries for 113 yards. Wyoming, Harrison Whaley, 11 carries, 110 yards, and one touchdown. Granted, there was a 62-yard run in there. Mm-hmm. I get it. I'm just de- defeating y'all's arguments. Wait, real I, fast. I, I'm I'm Taj, Taj I'm Brooks, Texas Tech, 19 carries, mm-hmm. 95 yards. How much Can- of that was in the fourth <laughs> <laughs> Kansas, <laughs> Kansas, 25 carries for 124 yards and a touchdown. Uh, and so you got Dylan Johnson lining up on that team. 201 carries, 1,113 yards, 14 touchdown, like five yards, five yards per rush. Is Texas susceptible to the run? Hell, Why you keep hell no. me? I'm just, I'm just, I'm just asking. Well, you're, you've been no. the counterpoint yeah, today. No, yeah. so. no, I'm gonna say hell no. Um, for me, uh, <laughs> for it's, it's a, well, it's a myth, right? Like they're not susceptible to the run. Like, Texas correct? isn't susceptible to the run. That's the yeah. That's the. It's the Texas same. is not the so they're, they're not, not they're not. Yeah, they're not. They're not. They're not. Right. So you <laughs> regard. I don't know what the question was. <laughs> Look, forget run on them. Forget numbers. The eyeball test should tell you everything. When okay. you cut on games, you know you cannot run on this Texas team, and that's the biggest difference. I, I don't know what you just spewed out right there, but <laughs> I'm it, just giving it, I'm giving it, the counterpoint. It doesn't match up to what we see on film, and yeah. when you cut on that tape, teams know better than to run the ball. Now they still have to because that's what football is, mm-hmm. but. Will Washington be confident running the ball on us? I doubt that. I highly doubt that. And it's because of our D-line. I agree. I want to I also add on, if we want to go numbers route, so you take into account the leading rusher in the country, or at least at the time that they played him, yep. and the Dope Walker Award winner, they wanted him to run the rock because that's what they do well. What's the Dope Walker Award again? Yeah, the best running back in the country. <laughs> so he's mm-hmm. done it a couple times. Yeah, he's, oh. he's, he's, he's mm-hmm. done well. Uh, okay. That didn't work out. Mm-hmm. Kansas State, whenever they were... In their prime, in the middle of the season, they mm-hmm. faced Texas. Top five. What they did well was run yeah. the rock. Didn't they towed it the rock. Mm-hmm. And what did Texas say? Not happening. Iowa State. Whenever they was picking up steam and doing what they did well, it was because they was running the rock with Sama and Norton and the other back. They had three guys that were averaging over 200 yards. And Texas said, nah, not today. Yep. And I think, and, and those are recent, more recent than that. Oklahoma, if you take out Dylan Gabriel, and all of those are not designed quarterback runs. Those a lot were actually scrambles. scrambles he just oh, took yeah. off. Yeah. So those are off schedule throw or plays that he took off running. But if you look at the running back production from that standpoint, okay. that's not the case. Michael Penix Jr. ain't taking off to go be Michael Vick. Like right. that, he's he's Michael Penix, not Michael Vick. That's not it's not <laughs> in his game, right? Dylan Johnson, for them to have success offensively in the way that they have been successful. As of later in the season, because that's when he's been at his best, the numbers you rattled off were because of the last six games that he's had, mm-hmm. not necessarily because of his entire season, yeah. but because of the last six. It's because he's been a focal part of keeping the balance in their offense. But that's what Texas also does well. So I think I like Texas in this matchup. I don't think they're susceptible in the run whenever they really want to focus on running the ball with a running back. Yeah. All right, last one. Wait, wait. I, I, oh, I got. Go. I, I'm just. Yeah. You Get know. Some I'm not defending. I don't think <laughs> no, you can no, run no, on Texas. No, no, just no, 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 no. no. I'm, I'm just, just stats are for losers. Okay, I'm just. Gonna, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know the actual percentage on it, so this is more of just throwing some things into the air. Um, but I'm curious to know all those things considered, those those great team efforts of running the football. Where did Texas fall on the season in its ranking against the run? Top five. Mm-hmm. I think we're third. Mm-hmm. Yeah, top five. Yeah, no, Three or four. Yeah. So those things happened, and you still have the third best defense in the country against the run. Mm-hmm. So what did everybody else do? Right. Yeah, let's I read like, everybody like, else's numbers. That, that, <laughs> that, 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 that's, how, that's how I look yeah, at that. Is that like, yeah. like, listen, and then you, you guys know, like, God know stats can be skewed mm-hmm. as far as the gaining of them, not usually the losing of them or them not being existent. So when I, I will not forgive your boy Taj Brooks for going, <laughs> I'm, I'm not forgiving. <laughs> right, the one on there that I'm giving, I'm saluting is is Dylan Gabriel. Bro took that game over. Mm-hmm. He did his thing. He right, wanted, he wanted for him. Uh, right, right. But and and I'm looking at K State, and you know they did what they needed to do, and they they crossed that hundred mark, uh, that century mark on the on the uh, on that game. So they did their thing. Salute to them too. But on the season. As, as a total product put on the field, there's no run in the football. One of the teams that's in these college football playoffs right now is Alabama. Mm-hmm. What happened to that run game? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? And, and we all know uh, 
what's his name has gotten better. Jalen yeah. Monroe has gotten better, Absolutely. but they want to run that ball. Mm-hmm. They they want to run that football, and I'm just like, and they've been able to do so. We just watched them do it against Georgia, mm-hmm. right? And Georgia ain't no slouch. Right. They've been the best college, the best team in college football for the last two three years, right? Mm-hmm. Our defense, there's there's that running the football is not happening. All right. Well, that was easy. I knew, I knew it would be. All right, this one I'm interested to hear what y'all say. And, and don't, you don't have to take this literally. These are just quotes I've heard. Washington has the best passing attack in college football. I think so. I think that's, I think that's, I think that's, I think that's, give me a better one. I don't know, though. I don't mean stat wise. It doesn't have to be stat wise. I don't know who's in contention. I think we're up there. We just, I feel like we just, we average 187 yards on the game. Like, we try to run the ball. Like, I feel like if we, I don't know. I feel like yeah. if we poured more. Are you talking about like, ta- but, but I think right. your, your argument like, is more of like talent offense. versus production. Yeah, well, I, just, I think we, we are we are right on par talent wise. Yeah. But production wise. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, I think enough. UW has yeah. the best yeah. passing game. Yeah. I agree with that. Fair yeah. enough. And yeah. they try to run the ball. They don't yeah. care about it really, but they yeah. try to run the I'm ball. A, I'm a back down on it. I just feel like when we had JB, it like, yeah. it kind of. Took, yeah, a, I, took away a little bit from our. I don't know. So because soccer yeah. wants soccer wants yeah. a little bit of balance. Yeah, yeah. I don't think Kelly DeBoer cares point. about balance. I think he knows that it helps him win games. Right. So mm-hmm. that's why he promotes some balance in the offense. But you got three NFL wide receivers. You haven't faced a wide receiving core this good since you faced LSU. That's the last time you faced a wide receiving core this good. Uh, he's the best quarterback you've played all year. He'll be drafted mm-hmm. in the first round. A sophisticated passing game. A quarterback who's been in the same system yep. for three years. We know what that means. Look at Dylan yeah. Gabriel in the system. And dude, they're completing 40% of their deep balls Jeez, down right. the field. Like 20 That's plus big, yards down right. the field. That's a low percentage throw. You ain't supposed to be like yeah, 33, like, right. 31 <laughs> percent like maybe. And that's considered average and good. These guys made 40 percent of their deep balls being completed downfield. And you got a first round wide receiver in Romo Dunze. who's going to be first receiver drafted overall. I Yeah. I don't think it's even close. I'm a, I'm you think a, he's the first? Yeah, I got to see that. Uh, J- Daniel Jeremiah Wait, who does out. a lot of NFL work. Uh, did you forgot Daniel, that there's a guy in Ohio State? Daniel, oh, I'm just saying. Yeah. Yeah, no, 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 you're right. You're right. Yeah, I was, 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 was going to yeah. make a bet. That's but, fair. Uh, yeah. 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 I agree. I agree. I agree. I'm quoting Daniel Jeremiah. He yeah. said, my favorite receiver in the draft is Romeo Dunze. Yeah. He says his favorite receiver in the draft, and he, was, he does the NFL draft now. So I'm not, I'm not, you're right. Maybe he won't be the first receiver drafted, okay. but he does say that's his favorite receiver in the draft. Okay. Not necessarily. Who are you, your favorite receiver? Marvin Harrison. Okay. Okay. That's what, that's, that's what I want to know. Yeah. I like Marvin Harris. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. yeah he's a little bit. I, I'm going to throw out the stack. I can tell you he was coming at you more. I'm going to get a quote, and we got to source my material. He said it the first time in the middle of the show. Like I did know that. Yeah. Yeah. He, 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 he came down on that. Hey, Alicia, I think y'all been saving this up. Wait, let's not forget. Me and Fozzie are like, hey, we think it's Marvin Harrison. He like, you want to bet on it? He trying to. He, <laughs> trying to, <laughs> he, trying to, he on our side. Yeah, he's he not telling to, you he with us. Yeah, no, I'm watching. I'm going to let him finish. I'm throwing out the quote of the draft specialist. The draft house. So you get mad at him. Look at that damn Jeremiah. The quote is on Twitter. That's That ain't never right. <laughs> when is a mock draft actually gone I'm just away saying. a mock draft yeah. has been uh, mocked <laughs> I'm going to throw out this stat which I thought was really interesting on, on the defensive rankings of who the University of Washington has played out of the 13 so 12 teams they played uh, 6 of them are ranked 113th or below mm-hmm. point man that's so, my point y'all want to get his Joe Morrow alright that's my point. <laughs> which which is my, my point. Which you is haven't like, seen this. But I think that's so that's the last one we have is Washington has the best offensive line in college football. No, yes, uh, because they have the trophy. You got if you got the trophy, then you are the best until somebody else gets the trophy. Now, are they the best? Uh, we're gonna see. We're gonna see. Yeah, we're gonna see. Because like you just pointed out what I said I've seen on film. And I was like, man, I've I've seen these guys lose that battle throughout a game. Multiple times. I said that earlier. I've seen them lose the battle throughout the game multiple times. Now, I didn't know that they weren't playing very productive guys on the other side for half of their season. But I'll tell you this, when they line it down next Monday, those guys are are the best that, that college football has to offer right now. Yep. Those guys are literally the best at the interior defensive line are the yeah. best that college football has to offer mm-hmm. right now. So we are going to see if you are deserving of that trophy. Yeah, and I think I agree with what Rod said, yeah. though, is I think, look, systematically, 
they do what they need to do. And and Absolutely. Penix Penix helps them a lot because he moves really well in the pocket. So even though these guys aren't the biggest, they might not be the best offensive line, but for that system, They're they great. do their job. They're great. And yeah. and when yeah. you watch it, he doesn't get touched as much as he should. Yeah. And you and it's frustrating when you watch it, you see guys that are you're There's like pressure, Dude, just, just get him. Just yeah, take yeah. him. Yeah. Get him. <laughs> and like and they can't. And I think and, that's the difference. I think the sack numbers aren't up there, so that's kind of why yep. we're highlighting yeah. them as the best offensive line, but I'm going to hold off on my answer. We got to see Monday. Yeah. We got yeah. to see. To, mm-hmm. You made a point earlier, too. Um, How many years? You said this is your three or four for him in this system? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I do believe that, like, where that shows up is not just knowing where to go with the ball or understanding the coverage. It's those small things. Mm-hmm. Where it's like, where we're saying, dude, he's right there. Just get him. He understands. Yep. I got to get this ball out right now. He understands I can take an incompletion, but not a sack. Yep. Like, you, you know what I mean? Like, he understands. And that also helps in making those sack numbers be as low as they are. But I will not act like the lack of competition is not a contributing factor to them taking home that trophy. Not going to act like they not nice, but the best, you got to show me. Yeah. Here, here's where I also look at it just from a comparison standpoint. I would say Oklahoma State is a poor man's version of what Washington wants to run because Oklahoma State want to push the ball down the field. Yep. They, they just had to rely on the running back because Alan Bowman was inconsistent at times. So they was like, okay, we need to tote the rock. Oh, he doing well toting the rock. Well, I guess we kind of do it. But they don't really want to. Like, it's, it's, yeah. it's weird watching them because they will open up big games and not feature Ali Gordon for like 10 plays. And it's like, why do you all have the dope walkers sitting back there not being involved? <laughs> mm-hmm. And it's the same way with Washington. You just talked about Dylan Johnson's stats. Like, dude only got 200 carries the whole season. Mm-hmm. And he's averaging mm-hmm. five a pop. And it's like, why not? But they will throw that rock. Mm-hmm. They will let it fly. And I feel like that's what Oklahoma State's identity is. Just Washington does it better. They got maybe higher end talent or maybe the the guys that they're pulling in are systematic. And they're in year three, four, five, maybe even six playing in college football. And they got that chemistry together. But I compare them in a similar fashion to what Oklahoma State wants to do on the offensive side of the ball. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I watched them probably, I think I watched seven or eight of Washington's games, or at least the highlights on that. And the the, the really interesting thing about Penix to me was that he, when he does feel that pressure or when things, when things get tough, he goes to the deep ball. Because he knows, he's like, I got Rome there. He's somebody a one on one. I'm either going to throw it short. Say, or I'm somebody like, down there. I'm like, like, somebody down there. 500. Rome no, down but, yeah. so, <laughs> but I mean, he does it. And same thing yeah. to Polk is he knows exactly where they are. And when mm-hmm. they got one on one, he knows that his bailout is either yeah. throw it short Just or throw it long to those chance. guys. Yeah. And it, it works and, out. And Rod said it's 70%. Yep. 70%. That's crazy. That is crazy. That's a crazy stat, bro. Yeah, man. He's a guy. Yeah, that's Posse, I don't know about Dylan. I, I'm not. I'm not sold on him mm-hmm. yet. I don't know if he's um, just because his yards come from everybody being so scared of this offense. Uh-huh. Light everybody boxes. being so light, light boxes. Light boxes. Light boxes. Light boxes. You can't really light bring light up the safety mm-hmm. in the box, the extra guy, the extra man. It's just he's he 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 his, his looks. His, his looks that he's getting really good yardage off of. I mean, it's it's open. It's, yeah, he's got space too. So I, I, I mean, jury's still out if he if he's if he's a a really tough tough running back. We'll see on Monday. He, now he does run hard. I, I want to yeah. give him that credit, and I think that's a testament to Kalen DeBoer because everything that we've said synonymous about this team, whether we talking about the offense or the defense, is they play hard. Yeah, mm-hmm. and, and they may mess up, especially on the defensive side <laughs> of the ball. Right, they miss tackles. They blow coverages, but they doing it 100%. Yep. And it's the same way. Dylan Johnson, man, he's not a big frame guy either. Like, I don't know how if he can handle a 25-carry day. Like, that's not how he's built or at least how he's been utilized for Washington. Yeah. Yeah. But whenever he does tote the rock, man, he he definitely tries to get all the yardage that are available. He's not Isaiah Pacheco, man. No. He, he ain't him. No. Ain't, yeah. ain't too many people him. <laughs> yeah. But he does run really hard with a lot of intensity to get those yardage that he's, he's trying to get. But it is a lot of space for him, yeah. which is also the reason why they probably won the Joe Moore Award. Mm-hmm. <laughs> when yeah. you think about it, though, it's like if we all are in agreement that, you know, let's say Washington show up with their best game, Texas show up with their best game. What does that mm. mean? I mean, Washington going to get a couple deep shots in there. Mm-hmm. They're going to be able to push the ball, you know, not at will, but they're going to push the ball, mm-hmm. right? And then you talk about run game being non-existent, and you talk about consistent pressure up, consistent pressure up the A-gap. Mm-hmm. On the, run, the run's gone, so now it's on the pass game. Mm-hmm. I'm like, what, what wins that battle? Like, that battle. Everybody's showing up playing their best. What wins that battle? Well, Washington yeah. doesn't stop Texas. And that's yeah, what, that's what has me leaning yeah. that way, yeah. is I'm just like, you take that run game away and you start putting that pressure up the middle, what happens? 
Yeah. 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 Like what happens? What does that? What? What? Now, if, if we throw yeah. that at him, yeah. and he's still like, able to yeah. to do. Mm-hmm. Salute, sir. Bra- yeah, Braylon yeah. Trice Salute, is going to have Salute, that. sir. You talk yeah. about the DNs for Texas having mm-hmm. to have their best game. I, I agree with Jay. I don't think they have to have their best. I think the interior has to be more of a factor than the outside edge rusher. Mm-hmm. But for Washington, like Braylon Trice has to absolutely be an impact and affect their game. Mm-hmm. If they want to have success on defense, um, I don't even know how you say his name. Edifon Alash. <laughs> I, I, I don't know how to say it. Yeah. But the dude fly around the field. Line he, back. Yes. Yep. He is their mm-hmm. other impact player mm-hmm. that just he, he just everywhere. You turn on tape, that's where he is. Yeah, Trice is next. I can't bro. pronounce his name, but he's there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Him and Trice, like they gonna have to perform lights mm-hmm. out in order for their defense to have success against the Texas. Tri- Trice you know? has more pressures than all the other defensive ends combined. Exactly. He's got 70 uh, on the season, had yeah. 70 Early, last yeah. year, and I believe is averaging almost 10 per game in the last five games. Now, he's I'm, I'm going to say this. No, he's a, he's a, I'm going to say this. I'm not round, to too. take anything away from him. You cut the tape on, he's flying. He yeah. there. Mm-hmm. He like that. So is Dallas Turner. Sure. Alabama. Mm-hmm. That's fair. No, and who no. you'll probably take, you're probably going to take Dallas Turner first, no, right? No, no. Did y'all see him when they played Texas? <laughs> no, I'm with you. Did um, he show up? <laughs> I'm with you. I like and I love, tackles. And, I, and, 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 yeah. and that, if you watch this, DT is my guy. But the, the facts are the facts. 60 minutes of football was played. And, and that's fair. Well, I think that's why we went this whole podcast without mentioning the DNs on, uh, yeah. on Washington side. Just because yeah. we feel good about our line. We yeah. feel good yeah. about our tackles. Yeah. And I, I mean, we haven't said that, so we need to give them our props. Yeah. yeah but I feel good about mm-hmm. our O line. And yeah. Even though we haven't discussed it, it's a key part to this game. Yep, for mm-hmm. sure. I want to throw one thing out there. I know it's not on our list. Uh, mm-hmm. CJ Baxter. What about him? I like him a lot. Uh, what? what, <laughs> what? Is, is he an Austin what? guy? <laughs> <laughs> what? His his impact on this game. What's it looking? What do we need from him? Because you know, twenty four is is not there. Mm-hmm. Blue mm-hmm. is blue in, in CJ, and then it's going to be seven, mm-hmm. right? Robinson. Those are the guys that are going to have to, and they've been proven as a group that they've been able to get that thing going. Mm-hmm. But like like we used to say, mm-hmm. somebody got to pop it off. Pop it mm-hmm. off. Somebody got to pop it off. And I think they're going to roll four out there first. Yep. Have to. So if we talk about guys that we see on tape flying around on Washington's defensive side in the mm-hmm. box, then who's our guy that's going to set the tone on our side? Well, Can here, four set the tone? I like That's a good point. For me, we haven't seen a healthy C.J. Baxter all season. So kind of going back to one of Fozzie's early points is that we got a month to get healthy. I'm really excited to see what this young kid's going to do with a healthy body. I think he's going to be explosive. I think we're going to get him in space a little bit. And I don't think he has to, I don't think he has to rush for 125. I think right. he's got to pick up four or five yards a pop. If he does that, I think yeah. it opens up our passing game and we can do whatever we want. Well, and if, if you guys recall back, I don't know who saw it, but the, the Oregon State game, Oregon State stayed in that game because they have a running back, Damian yeah. Martinez, Ooh. who is yeah. a beast Martinez, at right. Louisville, yeah. right? Yeah. And now, he, the weather kind of impacted that. I, I totally agree. Yeah. But Fozzie he runs It was raining hard. for everybody. Yes. And it was the, raining Washington for everybody. Intended, Washington performed, to me, they performed better against scat backs, like quicker backs. Like they did a better job, like with Oregon. Not that they contained it, yeah. but they do they do better against that as opposed to the physical back. Power so I backs, do think yeah. I do think CJ is going to be an important piece, but I also mm-hmm. think the you know the the Keelans and the and Jaden Blue and those guys are going to be, be a big difference too. So we'll see. I wanna, I wanna, and one thing, Texas, what we all Texas speed, right? I'm mm-hmm. I'm I'm curious. The same way that we know that like Michigan and Bama, you kind of got like carbon copies of each other lining up. Mm-hmm. But I believe Bama just got more athletic ability than Michigan overall. So yeah, it'd be no interesting. I'm, I'm curious to see what kind of athletes they rolling out there. Mm-hmm. Yep. Like, w- what does it look like? It's going to be fun to watch. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I think no matter what, we're going to have an exciting game. I think it's going to be awesome to finally see these two teams on the field. Yep. And we'll be back uh, next week regardless. But uh, mm-hmm. no, no, no. Yeah, we're coming back as winner. Yeah. I'm going to yeah. 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 Championship shirt. Yes, sir. All right. All right. Coming back yes, sir. And, and ready for the national anthem. And ready. <laughs> I'm not talk, ready. Tap them in. I might not talk a lot that next episode. I gotta save my phone. Does, like, does, does anybody believe this? I'm gonna come with a turtleneck. I'm gonna have a turtleneck on. Anybody can get on the field in NRG Stadium and sing the national anthem. I believe it. I believe it. You made it. I'm the mayor. I'm the mayor. You made it. Okay. Okay. Gonna know what to say. Oh, say. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, no, what the say? Oh, no, I, he, I, I, he might walk out. I'm not gonna lie. I, th- I thought Jay was from Katy. This is news to me. Oh, 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 oh,
was like, hey, hey, hey. That's just what I thought. Like, my bad. Oh, oh, yeah, no, no disrespect. Oh, no disrespect. Oh, no disrespect. Oh, no disrespect. All right, we're going to end on that shot fired. So, all right, we'll see y'all back here next week. <laughs>